In the last part uh, of uh, this first module, uh, we are going to see how to measure, finally, business process performances uh, once we have learned how to interpret and map the different type of business processes. Understanding uh, uh, the approaches uh, of business process performance measurement is very important because uh, mm, the objective of mapping and modeling are in their self uh, the possibility to identify potential improvements for our processes uh, and of course in order to identify this type of improvements uh, uh, you should rely on numbers so that's why uh, you see a very strong statement uh, uh, saying that you can improve only uh, what you can measure you can improve only uh, if you have a number that can suggest you that some improvements are are needed and you can have numbers only if you measure how in this case your processes are functioning good or or, or bad. So numbers are essentially the main drivers uh, for, uh, process, uh, for, for process improvement. In order to establish uh, uh, a sound business process performance measurement system, as you can see in the slide, there are essentially four steps that need to be, to be done. The first one is uh, to analyze and define which are the critical success factor of uh, the business process uh, uh, which are which we are analyzing second uh, we should define which are the relevant the relevant performance dimensions for uh, the business process uh, under investigation under analysis then once we have identified the, this performance dimension we should define the possible key performance indicators uh, mapping and populating this performance dimension and finally among the all possible KPI identified covering the different performance dimension select only a limited set of them based on their relevance and feasibility step one identify the critical success factor of uh, uh, of the business process and the company which are what are critical success factor Critical success factor are those performance um, on which the company wants to be recognized in the market and wants to gain competitive advantage. Of course, critical success factor, by definition, uh, uh, must be associated uh, uh, to uh, the comp must be driven by the company strategy and can be associated. Uh, uh, on cost or revenue size, so can be critical success, can, can be factors that can affect uh, and indirectly or the cost or the revenue, let's say, stream of the company. Here you see some, some, some example. A critical success factor is uh, uh, the capability to be responsive to customer requests. For example, Dell, Dell a famous uh, computer producer, uh, is very popular in, let's say, in, in the industry for being really time responsive to uh, customer requests of laptops uh, thanks to a flexible configuration of the supply chain uh, who enables Dell to respond very quickly to customer requests. Another example of, of um, critical success factor is customer service. For example, Pirelli, which is a famous European tire producer, is the market leader of uh, tire production uh, because uh, uh, he is able to give uh, to both industrial and consumer, cu and consumer customers a superior level of service, both uh, in terms of uh, after-sale services uh, uh, than in uh, uh, management of the customer relationship. Another let's say critical success factor, is also the price quality ratio. Uh, all of you, I think, know IKEA, uh, which is the famous home furniture uh, producer and distributor. IKEA uh, has success in, in the market because it's able to offer products uh, uh, both at an affordable price uh, uh, and uh, uh, at a reasonable uh, quality. 
Um, another example is the customization of products. Uh, here I put the, the, the reference to Bianchi, Bianchi, which is an in, uh, in, in European producer of uh, uh, sport bicycle. And uh, if you try to Google Bianchi or try to, to, to buy something from their website, uh, you can see that uh, Bianchi can offer you the possibility to customize the functionality of your bicycle in terms of color, in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, operation, in terms of components, in terms of all that you want, uh, in almost all the combination uh, and uh, provide a delivery in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, another um, critical example of critical success factor is the efficiency in the use of resources. Again, we have another example. Whirlpool. Whirlpool is a famous European, but also I think international, uh, white goods producer like uh, dryer, like washing machine, and so on, uh, and. Uh, is one of the leader in the market uh, because uh, uh, its, produ its production activities uh, are characterized by an efficient use of all resources, machinery and human resources and equipment and so on. And so Whirlpool is able to keep its prices down uh, and those being very competitive in the market with very good products. Finally, Another critical success factor is style and design. Style and design, I think the example of Apple it, is very evident to, 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 to everyone. Uh, evident, uh, Apple is also leader in the market, uh, uh, not mainly for its technology, but because Apple is a style, uh, because Apple products are trendy. So Apple processes are also oriented to, uh, toward the uh, affirmation of its style, its style and design uh, at the eyes of, of the customers. Please note that, uh, uh, as we have discussed, uh, uh, critical success factor, uh, uh, as you can perceive, are intangible aspects. So um, it's very difficult to, to measure directly uh, critical success factor. Uh, however, uh, indirect measure can be set to the definition of performance dimension and KPI metrics. For example, by designing uh, what we can call the value driver map. So uh, by uh, connecting, connecting each critical success factor which is relevant for the company to some tangible performance measurement dimension uh, that can be assessed uh, through the measure of specific KPIs. But which are the main business performance, uh, business process performance uh, that should be uh, should fall under under our uh, uh, under the scope of our analysis? Uh, we can refer to this, let's say, famous uh, framework, uh, which is named the Devil Performance Quadrangle, uh, which highlights that the main uh, business process performance dimension are essentially four. Time, cost, flexibility, and quality. We are going to analyze these more in detail in the following, but just a quick, let's say, explanation of the name. This is named the Davis Quadrangle in order to highlight that these four performances are evidently in trade-off, meaning that uh, you cannot improve on one of them uh, without negatively impacting uh, uh, one of the other. Uh, think about, for example, the, the Say, the, the evident trade-off between cost and quality. If you want to make cost goes down, of course uh, you, should, you should reduce the quality. If you want to sell a product or you, if, if you want an output of a process uh, of an higher quality, of course you should expect higher cost, and so on. In making, of course, uh, the, this con the consideration how to measure uh, let's say, how to set specific uh, KPIs uh, uh, on this different dimension, which are the dimension falling under the scope of our analysis, uh, uh, we, should, we, should, we should first consider uh, who is interested in understanding if process performance uh, uh, are good or bad. Essentially, which are the stakeholders of, uh, uh, of our process. And if we look at, let's say, the organizational structure of a company, of a general company, 
um, let's say, we immediately identify that there are essential, essentially two types of stakeholders, the external customer and internal company people. So, by definition, uh, uh, key performance indicators should be defined and should be measured according uh, to satisfy uh, the interest uh, uh, of both these two categories of, uh, uh, of stakeholders. That's why uh, in our reference framework uh, we can essentially distinguish uh, uh, four dimensions of uh, performance. Uh, under which usually we measure uh, uh, if, uh, if and how a process is operating properly or not. These dimensions are, as we already said, uh, cost, time, quality and uh, flexibility. And uh, let's say that this type of measure can be distinguished on two levels. First of all, we have uh, what we call the internal uh, performance measurement uh, systems uh, and performance uh, KPIs, which are essentially uh, KPI which are set in order to measure cost, time, quality and flexibility from an internal perspective, meaning that uh, we focus on the process and how the process functions internally to the organization, uh, uh, which are measures that are not, let's say, immediately uh, visible to the, to the final customer and uh, have the aim uh, to measure and to depict uh, how the process functions in terms of uh, phases, processes, activities, resources involved, uh, and tools used during the process. Then we have uh, instead external KPIs. External KPIs are those uh, performance uh, which are directly perceived by the customer of the process and that finally determines the value of the final output. So this KPI will be oriented, uh, will be focused on the customer and uh, uh, will, be, uh, will have the perspective of the process output uh, uh, will be KPIs which will be, let's say, uh, directly visible from, 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 from external and uh, will be measured uh, using as a, parameti a parameter of, uh, um, of assessment uh, the final output of the process. Beside these two categories, uh, we have added a third category which is named uh, general performance uh, indicators, uh, uh, which has the aim to describe the general parameter of functioning of our process uh, in order to, let's say, assess the dimension and the volume uh, of the process uh, which is under the scope of our analysis. But, However, now let's go uh, and try to analyze more in detail each type of performance uh, with possible example of KPI following under each area. Let's start with uh, uh, let's start with the business key performance indicators relating to uh, the general area. Uh, we have three different types of general indicators those related to the input, those related to the resources, and those related to the output. Input uh, key performance indicator essentially refer to the volume uh, in input to the, to the process, which can be new request or uh, review request, but essentially refer to what is in input uh, to the process. Then we have resources KPI. Resources KPI uh, can be related uh, to the need and usage of tangible resources uh, like human resources, uh, machinery, uh, materials, uh, equipment, and all that, let's say, feed uh, from a tangible perspective uh, the, 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 the process in the execution of these, activi these activities, uh, but can be also intangible resources like data and information needed to perform tasks, uh, particular knowledge, competencies, skills uh, that need to be put in place in order to perform the process, uh, or 
other type of special resources which are intangible, like for example, patent, pro um, property rights, and, and so on. And finally, we have uh, output uh, KPIs. Output KPIs refers essentially to how much uh, is the production of outputs uh, uh, made, by, uh, made by, by the process. Then, if we switch the attention to the internal KPI, we first have uh, uh, cost. Um, cost can be, in, using an internal process perspective, an internal stakeholder perspective, can be distinguished at three levels. Uh, first of all, we can include what we call the unitary output cost for the company, which is essentially how much the output of the process cost from the company perspective. And here I don't spend too much time, but too much time, but to, let's say to establish the cost of an output, uh, uh, we can refer to the traditional management accounting techniques like the job order costing, the operation costing, the activity based costing uh, that enable to allocate uh, the different cost pool to the, the output and then finally to evaluate the total cost. Uh, uh, of, of the product, of the service, or the intermediate output referring to, referring to this process. Then we have what we call the uh, overall process productivity, uh, which is essentially the ratio between uh, the output obtained uh, uh, through the process uh, and the resource used to obtain, uh, to obtain this output. Of course, uh, this, can, this can be uh, assessed in various ways, can measure the output and the resources from a physical perspective, for a, mo for a monetary perspective, uh, usually this is a percentage. My process has 90% uh, of productivity, and so on. Finally, uh, more than the process productivity, it's worthwhile to assess uh, uh, let's say the productivity of specific resources like uh, human resources, like machinery, like uh, equipment, like information system and so on. Uh, following the same rational, rational uh, resource productivity can be expressed through the ratio between the active working time of the resource uh, uh, and the total working time available for the resource. If we switch from the ex on the external perspective uh, uh, on the cost dimension, uh, we see that in this case we refer to the expenses and the cost incurred by the customer to obtain and use the output. So first of all we have the unitary output cost for the customer which is let's say essentially the price that the customer internal or external is going to pay to have the output of the process. Then we have what we call the cost of time for the customer. The cost of time for the customer is intended as the time spent by the customer to follow the, the whole process, which can be assessed to, let's say, the hourly or the daily rate of the customer, uh, uh, let's say, in economic quantity. But it is essentially measuring how much the customer is wasting its time following the process and waiting for the process to be to be uh, completed. Then we have what we call the cost of the resources for the customer, which is essentially uh, the time and the money used to access information on the product of services. Like for example, uh, if the customer to be part or to initiate a product or a process need to uh, pay a subscription rate, or if let's say, need to spend some time in looking for information about product or service. Think about, for example, bank services or insurance, insurance services when you scout website or, um, or a booklet in order to obtain information. This is a cost of time. And it means that the customer is spending some resources, time, uh, in order to be involved in this process. Finally, last but not least, we have the usage cost for the customer. The usage, co the usage cost for the customer are practically uh, all the costs that the customer experience uh, while using the product or services, uh, which can let's say, assess through monetary values, if you think about, for example, spare parts that need to be uh, purchased, electricity, additional materials that need to be added to 
the basic output of the process. If, uh, uh, for example, as maintenance services, a quality control is needed and so on, these are all usage costs for the customer. Then, if we switch to the quality, also in this case, we should distinguish between the internal perspective and the external perspective. The internal quality means essentially the level of alignment, measure essentially the level of alignment between the requirements, implicit or explicit, express, expressed by the internal customer and the final results of the output of the process. We, uh, let's say, essentially distinguish between what we can call the in-house quality, meaning how much the product or the service is aligned with standard or requirements document uh, communicated by the customer. Ad for example, can be assessed through the ratio between, uh, I don't know, the number of functionality present in the final output and the number of functionality requested in uh, initial documents uh, uh, when the process uh, will start uh, uh, at the beginning. Then we have uh, the percentage of scrap or rework experienced during the process. This is quite evident. It's all that is eliminated, is reworked, is, uh, uh, let's say, rejected during, uh, uh, during the process and can be extracted in units uh, or time or monetary value uh, in order to, let's say, put value, economic value in what has been reworked or rejected or uh, eliminated in the process. Uh, it's an assessment of quality, also the percentage of incorrect documents and information uh, which are processed during the process. And it can be measured, for example, as how many times has been necessary to fix documents and data error during, uh, during the process. Again, it can be expressed in terms of units or in terms of monetary value. Finally, it's a proxy of quality, of internal quality, also the resource availability. Resource availability assess essentially how many times needed resources, uh, uh, which can be human resources or physical or, or machinery or equipment or uh, ITC system and so on, uh, um, were not available to execute process activities when instead needed. And also in this case can be expressed in units or uh, monetary value. Uh, for example, when a plant is broken, when a product is not produced, uh, a company loses sales. So this can be an expression of monetary value of a resource unavailability. Finally, uh, no, sorry, uh, the external view of the quality instead assessment, uh, uh, the alignment with the customer requirements, implicit or explicit, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the requirements implicit or explicit expressed by the final customer and uh, the effective requirements put in the final output of the product. Uh, also in this case, uh, we have uh, different categories. First of all, we have what we call the project quality, meaning uh, uh, how much the product or service is aligned with standard requirements uh, uh, or with standard or requirements documents of, uh, of the customer. This is quite different uh, um, from the in-house quality internal. I mean, uh, because in this case, uh, we are referring to official documents uh, that initiate the process or are, uh, let's say, communicated by the customer uh, through the process. Like, for example, tender documents designed by the customer to initiate uh, a request for quotation process by, uh, by the supplier. So by the end, the, out, the final output will be evaluated according to the requirements and the functionalities that were included in this type of document. Then we have what we call the on-field quality, which is essentially uh, the, which is assessed essentially uh, how bad 
or good the process has worked uh, uh, to realize the product or the services needed by 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 the customer uh, uh, both in the, at the initial and then during its life cycles as it can be measured through for example the number of complaints made by the customer the number of litigation the possible warranty compensation that the customer is asking because the product or the services is not satisfying his expectation and it can be expressed in this case in units uh, time or monetary value as usual then we have uh, what we call the perceived quality the perceived quality i don't go too much in detail into this because it's a marketing issue so it's let's say a qualitative way to measure how much the customer is satisfied satisfied uh, referring to both the process and the output so it's a, usually measured through a marketing approach like survey or like interviews on uh, for example on a scale a, quali a quantitative scale from one to, 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 to five then we have what we call the product reliability uh, which is essentially the capability of the product to keep and maintain its functionalities during time for example, think about of your mobile phone and your touch screen. Touch screen is very effective and initial that during one, two, after one, two, three, five, four, six, seven, and so on years, so it, it can lose its sensitivity. The, cap the capability to not lose this sensitivity is product reliability. We have also product maintainability, which is, uh, uh, let's say, connected to the previous, I mean, uh, a product can have, can have a bad reliability or a service can have a bad reliability but a good maintainability, meaning that uh, once uh, a functionality uh, uh, has been lost, uh, uh, the product can be very capable uh, to restoring its functionalities in a, in a very easy way. Think, for example, about a battery. Think about the iPhone. The iPhone has a product maintainability very bad referring to the battery because once uh, the battery in functionality uh, has been lost, uh, you need to go to the Apple Store and change the phone uh, because you cannot restore the battery functionality just, for example, by changing the battery. Finally, another proxy of the external quality uh, let's say, performance, uh, is the after-sale assistance. The after-sale assistance is, let's say, the evaluation of the quality and also the number of support services after sales. For example, think about when company have established dedicated call center number for specific, uh, uh, specific type of, of customer. This increases the perception of the quality of service that the, ca the company is giving to, to, this, uh, to this customer. Then, yes, finally, uh, we can switch to, let's say, the time dimension, uh, which can also be, let's say, distinguished between uh, the internal perspective and the external perspective. From the internal perspective, uh, uh, let's say, the time dimension uh, uh, aim to measure the amount of time needed to react to the request of the internal customer and essentially uh, can mean uh, uh, measuring three levels of time. The first one is what we call lead time. The lead time can be defined as the time uh, that encompass uh, between uh, when input resources are all available to start the process uh, and uh, uh, the time in which uh, uh, the output of the process is delivered to the internal customer. Then we have instead what we call the time to market. Time to market is instead the time that the company needs to introduce a new product in the market. So from the, the, the concept design to the effective and practical product launch on the market. And of course, it is something which is very related to what we call the new product development process. Finally, we have what we call the throughput efficiency, which is essentially a ratio between the active working time of resources and the lead time calculated uh, as uh, I told you some, some minutes ago. This is from the internal perspective. From the external pers perspective instead, uh, also in this case, we have three different uh, levels to measure uh, the time dimension. 
which are different KPIs uh, uh, if compared to the internal perspective. Because first of all, we have uh, the response time. The response time is the time that uh, encompasses between when the customer put its request uh, to the time in which the order is fulfilled. And I mean, there is not a, a univocal definition uh, in saying the time in which the order is fulfilled. Uh, some companies included uh, uh, include uh, um, are including the physical delivery and others are not uh, because physical delivery can be a part of other process so um, order fulfillment uh, uh, ends in the moment in which in the system the order is closed and this can happen even if the product is not has not been physically delivered to 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 a customer. But by the way, this is just a matter of stating uh, which is the, the, the perspective that we are adopting. Uh, that's it. Uh, then we have uh, punctuality. Punctuality is, uh, let's say, the ability to respect the schedule request by the customer. For example, measured by the ratio with, between uh, uh, the orders on time and the total number of orders. Finally, we have what we call the time flexibility. Time flexibility is the, the ability to meet some modification made by the customer uh, respecting the required schedule. So the customer is asking for more quantity, for different colors, for uh, a different destination of delivery and so on. I'm able to satisfy this request uh, even though uh, I'm not changing. Uh, uh, I'm not changing the schedule I had promised to the customer at the initial, at the start of, at the beginning or during the process. Finally, the last dimension is uh, what we call the flexibility. Generally speaking, the flexibility, and we discuss it uh, by let's say looking at the time flexibility, uh, is the ability to meet changes, uh, uh, let's say requested by the customer, which can be internal or external, uh, essentially incurring in limited cost and time variation, uh, despite, uh, uh, let's say, you may add uh, input, uh, like resources needed, and output. Uh, Changes. So the customer is requesting something, uh, something that uh, imply changes, possible changes in resources and also the final configuration of the output. Uh, you are you are flexible if you are able to meet these changes, uh, incurring uh, illimited cost and time variation. From an internal point of view, mm, flexibility. Uh, is measured through KPI, uh, which intend essentially to assess uh, possible, uh, let's say, process constraint, like for example, time needed for executing factor activities request by the customer, or the, if a percentage of exceed capacity, for example, of machinery exists, uh, or uh, uh, let's say, um, how much is the time for introducing new resources in the process, like Farther human resources or uh, uh, increasing uh, the stock level and, and so on. From an external perspective, instead, the flexibility, uh, let's say, can be measured in terms of ability to respond to external customer request variation. Uh, for example, the time and cost uh, to uh, realize uh, a customized make to order product, so a product that uh, is made upon order of a customer which is requesting something which is not standard if compared to, to, to other type of, of, of request. Or uh, uh, how much the company is able to reduce the time uh, for particular urgent order. Or finally, the minimum economic quantity to be ordered by the customer, meaning, uh, let's say, the minimum quantity that I'm requiring to customer in order to accept their order. Of course, uh, the lower is the, the, this quantity, the more uh, I, am, uh, I am flexible, because just, let's say, some units or some monetary value uh, make feasible the acceptance of an order from the final customer. Now, the last step uh, is uh, once I have set uh, the different KPIs uh, uh, in the different areas that we have seen, so general indicators, internal perspective, external perspective with cost, time, quality, and flexibility, uh, 
I need to choose. I mean, what's happening in company is that uh, when I make this exercise, I map the dimension, I set KPIs in each dimension and so on, I have hundreds of, uh, of KPI that can be considered useful to access uh, if the process is functioning in a good or a bad way. However, uh, too much KPIs are as dangerous as not having no one KPI because uh, too much measure put confusion in the, in the organization. So in order to understand which KPIs uh, should be included or not in the set of the essential uh, to be carried on uh, to, for the assessment of our processes, three, che three checks should be made. First of all is what we call the critical success factor coverage. I mean, uh, we start by saying that companies should establish uh, uh, critical success factors. Critical success factors are usually not directly uh, measured because they are essentially intangible, we should identify KPIs that enable company to assess indirectly how much they are able to reach their critical success factor. So the first check they need to do is to map, let's say, critical success factor and KPI which, 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 which should contribute to, its, to their measurement. The second one, of course, is its process coverage. I mean, uh, Beside critical success factor, KPI uh, are designed in order to cover and to, let's say, uh, to enable a measurement of how the process are working. So the second check is understanding how much the KPI I have in mind to be kept in my set are covering the different processes of my organization. And last but not least, uh, uh, I should also match KPIs actually measure with the performance areas uh, uh, that are covered with this uh, uh, with this uh, uh, with this set of KPI uh, chosen, uh, because only considering this perspective we really know if the aqua set uh, is broader enough uh, to cover my assessment needs uh, on let's say on the main performance dimension that uh, are relevant to, to, to the company. That's it, no, because there is also a last step. Uh, I mean, uh, once I have the set of KPI and what I have made the check in order to determine, let's say, our, our sample, uh, uh, it's a good, let's say, use to, let's say, define what we call a KPI record. So, uh, a, 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 a detailed description uh, of uh, uh, how the KPI uh, interconnects with the organization. This means, for example, realizing for each KPI uh, a table like this, where we describe uh, the KPI. So, for example, project quality, what does it mean? The metric. So, a KPI uh, needs to give a number. At the, end, at the final. So the formula used for KPI calculation, the unit of measure. So I expect a number expressed in the money, in unit, in days, in percentage, and so on. The owner of the performance. So the main function or department which is responsible for the final performance. If, for example, the, 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 the KPI is uh, uh, the saving on uh, um, on a particular purchases, of course, the procurement department will be the owner of this type of performance. Frequency is the frequency of measurement. So how much, uh, uh, how many times uh, uh, this value is updated uh, during the year? So if it is updated monthly, weekly, yearly, daily, and so on. Uh, the distribution list. So which are possible function or departments that will be interested in knowing uh, the, the, the value of this KPI, uh, the level of analysis. I mean, I get a number which is expressed uh, in at which level of aggregation. So uh, a product family, a product variant, a type of customer, a geographical zone, uh, a particular market, and so on. Then, of course, the value. So we have a matrix. We have uh, a unit of measure. Then I want to know which is the actual value from the, the, the previous measure and uh, the need of compare. I mean, uh, this is the value and 
in order to understand if the KPI gives me a good or a bad value, I need to compare this with the target, so the desired value for the KPI, uh, also called as benchmark. So once we know uh, how to set the KPI for our business process, so now that we have seen some, exa some example on how to set possible KPI for our business processes, uh, um, let's talk briefly about which are the main errors that organization uh, may, uh, may, may implement uh, when designing uh, their business process uh, performance measurement system. First of all, the first error is don't link KPIs to, uh, to, to the strategy. I mean, please remember that the KPIs uh, uh, should come directly from uh, the uh, organization competitive strategy and from the critical success factor. What happens instead that is that, uh, uh, also because we, see, we saw that uh, uh, the the definition of this set of KPI and the implementation is not so easy. Uh, company uh, try to adopt standard framework and standard models that are taken as is from the theory and implementing in their organization. We don't have too much time in go in, into this detail, but for example, the Pana scorecard is a particular uh, framework uh, used to implement common metrics to measure something in organization. Many companies take this balance scorecard framework and implement it as is in their organization without customization, without changes, and so on. This is, I mean, this is wrong because uh, these models are model by definition, so needs to be customized according to, to, to the context. Uh, and most of all, uh, uh, by implementing this in, the, in this way, they can be, let's say, misleading in terms of uh, uh, indication, suggestion, and direction that they can give you uh, when then uh, we analyze the, file, the final value coming out from, from the, different, the different areas. The second typical error is uh, underestimate the causal linkage between the variable that determines the, the performance. So uh, usually managers think that uh, linkages are evident or don't need to be analyzed and so on. There is a, a famous example of, of a famous company, McDonald's, uh, um, relating to one of the most performance uh, uh, measurement um, indicator that McDonald uses, which is the turnover impact. So how much people uh, abandon the company during a certain period, uh, period of time. Uh, McDonald, uh, uh, let's say, take for granted the linkage uh, uh, that uh, low turnover uh, means high uh, employee satisfaction. If employees are more satisfied, they are more open to, to give a higher level of service to final customer, and when there is higher, higher level of service, uh, there are also higher revenues and so higher profit. Uh, that's real, let's say, um, in paper, uh, then in practice, uh, uh, McDonald's has made the benchmark with also some other competitors, uh, and uh, unfortunately, he discovered that uh, companies with uh, low, with higher turnover of people were performing better than McDonald's, uh, even though McDonald's, uh, according to this consideration, uh, was putting in place a lot of uh, initiative, uh, also very costly, in order to guarantee, uh, let's say, uh, employee retention. So like, for example, benefits, like, for example, premium, uh, monetary premium in case of uh, staying in the company one year, two years, three years, and so on, uh, because he believes that uh, high turnover Low turnover uh, was connecting to higher profit. Uh, yes, that's true and that's intuitive, but what McDonald uh, un was underestimating uh, was the fact that uh, this linkage is true uh, not for people, operational people, so people at lower level of the of the organization, but only with manager, uh, middle and high manager. So. A low turnover for manager finally leads to uh, high profit. Uh, low turnover or high turnover in operational people doesn't affect 
I mean, uh, with the lot of variance performance of the company. The third, uh, let's say, uh, bad error is uh, don't use a reasonable approach in defining targets, which is, I mean, evident. Uh, we need to set some, uh, uh, some KPIs, uh, uh, we need to set uh, benchmark and target value for each of them. Uh, this value need to, be, uh, need to be achievable because this also motivates resources to achieve them. If people perceive that they cannot achieve this value, of course, uh, they are not so much motivated in their activity because uh, they feel to be loser just before the start of, of the process and just before the start of, of the game. So 100% uh, of customer satisfaction, uh, uh, cut the cost of 60% uh, or uh, have a margin of 200% uh, uh, are ideal target, uh, but then should be deployed in a reasonable, in a reasonable way when talking with the people that then uh, need to, 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 to deal uh, with process activities that then uh, realize the ty this type of, um, of performance. Finally, last but not least, uh, uh, we need to check key performance metrics uh, in order to assure that they are both, both valid and reliable. Valid means essentially uh, the ability of the KPI and its metrics uh, to express uh, uh, to express uh, effectively uh, the, the KPI. I mean, it seems weird, but uh, uh, there are cases in which the KPI is well defined in terms of the meaning, but that the metrics is is not is not coherent. Uh, so. It means that uh, the KPI on paper is good, but then is not properly measured because the matrix is not correct or is not reflecting the definition of the KPI. So uh, please check uh, that the matrix you have defined uh, uh, reflect uh, the definition of the KPI you have given. That's why, let's say, the KPI record is, is, uh, is useful because put all the information together and mm, immediately you can you can see if there are inconsistency in, in the different level of the KPI uh, the KPI description and uh, uh, and uh, more uh, KPI need to be valid in their metric but their metric that also need to be reliable uh, meaning that the metrics could be defined correctly uh, but uh, if I'm not paying too much attention uh, uh, the way in which I measure the KPI can, can, can introduce distortion and uh, mislead evaluation. Just make an example. Think about the customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction on a scale from 1 to 5. Uh, customer satisfaction, for example, relating, uh, relating to the orders that the customer asks to the order fulfillment process. Okay? Uh, if uh, I just read, let's say, I have 100 customer and each customer has uh, associated a value from 1 to 5 on customer satisfaction. If I read uh, the, the, all the value and if I'm not advised on everything, I can say that, okay, this company has an average customer satisfaction of, uh, and I take all the value and I make the, the, the simple average uh, of the value and I get, I don't know, 3 out of 5. If instead someone tell me that, uh, of course, there can be high variation in terms of uh, quantity and monetary value of order requested by the customer, maybe I realize that uh, I cannot just make the simple average of all the value in order to understand the average customer satisfaction of, uh, of this company, but I need to include also uh, let's say, the magnitude of the order uh, requested by the customer and which rely behind that value. Because uh, a customer satisfaction of 5 uh, on, a, uh, on an order of 1,000 is not the same of a customer satisfaction of 5 or 4 on, a, on, on, a, on an order of 10. If this is not specified, it means that uh, the metric of this KPI is not reliable. So is introducing is this in this introducing distortion in order to give the final and interpret the final value of the key performance indicator.